Well, a couple of things, Abby. First, it's good to be with you. Yeah. Now, let me say this. It is without question that whether you're black, brown, white, doesn't matter. We were all doing better under Donald Trump. You might want to look at raw job numbers, but a lot of those jobs are part-time jobs, not full-time jobs, not career jobs that help people actually change their the stars. What the poverty rate? I mean, those well, statistics on, but, are pretty but, clear, but, too. But here's one thing that is critical. The, when you do wages adjusted for inflation, that is down. And so you might be making more money, but you're paying significantly more for the goods and products that you use every day. That's affecting every American. It's hurting black Americans and Hispanic Americans more than any other group. And that's the fundamental problem with Bidenomics. And that's why he is being rejected. by I, a lot I, of I hear voters. what you're saying about inflation. And it's certainly true that inflation is obviously a huge issue. But on the issue of whether or not Black unemployment is higher or lower under Biden or Trump. It is just a fact that it is lower under Biden. So, I mean, Trump can make a case to black voters, but he shouldn't be lying about it. Well, here's the fundamental case. When you're talking about economics, do you have a job? That's an important thing. But are you making enough money to get ahead? Do you have more disposable income? Is there a pathway to building generational wealth? That is not possible under the Joe Biden economy. It's been a disaster for virtually all well, Americans except the very rich. I do want to ask you about one aspect of that, which is uh, about student loans, because that's an issue that actually matters to quite a lot of black voters. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration has pursued a policy of trying to find student loan forgiveness basically wherever they can. Uh, this is something that clearly disproportionately benefits black and brown borrowers. They owe an average of $25,000 more in student debt than white borrowers. Uh, is that a policy that, I mean, shouldn't black voters be looking at that when they're looking at who's going to put forward policies that benefit them? No, I don't think so. I think the number one policy, especially if you have a college degree, is is the economy thriving? Is it robust enough where I can use that degree to earn more money for my own benefit and for my family's benefit? But number two, and this is the most important thing, Joe Biden doesn't have the authority to do this. The Supreme Court has told him no. Congress has told, them, told him no, but he's done it anyway. That is a violation of separation of powers. You just don't get to pick and choose what money you're going to spend someplace because two-thirds of the American people, which also includes a lot of black people and a lot of Hispanic people, they did not go to college. And so what you're telling those people are, it didn't matter if you didn't go to college, but we're going to go ahead and give a bailout to some people who did. That's not right. It's not fair. It is not something that the America, American people want to see happen. The racial wealth gap in, uh, in terms of who, who owes what for higher education, do you believe that some of that is due to just longstanding disparities and what Black families have generational wealth that white families were able to build up that black families were not. And do you mm -hmm. think that the government should play any role in trying to help black borrowers catch up? Well, there's a couple of things in that. When you talk about generational wealth gaps, yes, some of it is, did, did my mother or did my grandmother have any wealth to pass, pass on to me? That answer was no. The wealth I'm building now is something that my wife and I are building with our families. There's a lot of black families that are doing that right now. A lot of mixed families, a lot of Hispanic families. That's happening today. You can't fault people who were able to pass wealth on before. What you can do it's is make sure fault. there are opportunities. It's not fault But when you them. talk about the, the wealth gap amongst races, you are talking about previous examples where other families were able to build wealth and pass it on. So that's why for a lot of black men in particular, but men in general, they're talking about building generational wealth. That's not something the government can help you do, except for the government having the proper uh, 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 rules and a proper policies for the economy to grow and thrive. I want to play a little bit of what Donald Trump said um, not so long ago. I, I'm sure you remember it. Take a listen. Both you and Trump talk about sort of moving past race and politics, but how is that not pandering? Well, first of all, in that event, the president talked for an hour. He was being glib, having a little bit of fun with the crowd, talking about what's happened. Because, look, if you're being falsely accused of so much junk uh, that is politically motivated, you would try to find some time to have fun with it as well. But that being said, what the president is focused on is an agenda that's going to put the American people first. And that's why you have voters from all demographic groups are starting to look his way, especially 
particularly black men, Hispanic men, etc., because they have seen the Joe Biden policies. It's been a disaster. That's why I call him the master of disaster, because everything has gone wrong. And they want a president who's going to be focused on America first, get the country on track. That's Donald Trump. What do you say to black and Hispanic voters who uh, not just are paying attention to the economic stuff, but also about character, Donald Trump's character in particular. When he was running his real estate empire, he was sued by the DOJ for racial discrimination. More recently, when he was president of the United States, uh, he d didn't want to denounce the white supremacists and racists in Charlottesville. When people look at that record... What do you say to them when they say we can't trust Donald Trump? To no, Abby, be fair no, Abby we got to be truthful. If you go back and watch the entire clip, it's a 17 minute clip still on YouTube of the president talking about what happened in Charlottesville. He denounced all of the all of the white supremacy that was going on in Charlottesville. I've reviewed that tape. I know you and your producers have reviewed that tape multiple times. Let's not let's not take one statement out of context. Okay. Let's be factual now. Well, you got to be fa for listen. 17 minutes. He denounced it. That is the history. People go on YouTube. Right now, don't listen to my words. Go so on YouTube right now. What's the point that you're making, Congressman? The point that, that I'm, the point what, that what's I'm the make... point that you're making about Donald Trump and the history that's pretty clear? Uh, the dis racial discrimination lawsuit. Mm -hmm. There's the Central Park Five. I mean, there are a lot of examples. But we can also talk about Joe Biden's record. No, but I'm just Joe wondering. Biden, uh, Donald Trump is making now. a pitch Joe to black Biden voters. So how does he address bill. that? It was to devastating black to black voters. You know this. It was devastating to black men in particular. The 94 crime bill. Joe Biden did that. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Biden also, didn't want his own kids to be Joe busted in schools. Joe Biden did that. That was his record as well. Joe Biden so has that's also not just focus on what issues. Donald Trump has said I'm a long you, time ago. Look at his record as president of the United States. I don't and his know. record as president was one that in, that one is one that actually wanted all Americans to thrive and succeed. He did not pick and choose he, when he was president. Don't you think that uh, Donald Trump ought to address some of those things from his own past? No, he doesn't need to do that. Everybody knows Donald Trump's entire history. The man has been in the public eye for four decades, if not five decades now, in the United States. What Americans are looking for right now is his competency as commander in chief. And that is why when people compare 45 versus 46, I mean, look, the, the choice is clear. The 45th president was significantly better than the 46th. It's without without a doubt. <laughs> I, that's, and that's obviously your opinion because you're a surrogate for him. I, I do want to get to a little bit of your own history. Sure. You have a really interesting story. And mm -hmm. um, when you were a young man, yeah. you encountered the law and yeah. you... Um, it, when you were 18 years old, you were charged with a marijuana uh, possession intent to distribute charge, mm -hmm. but you didn't go to jail for it. Um, a lot of people probably don't know that about you, but one of the yeah. interesting things that's come up is that you have this bill that you support that addresses crime in D.C., and it actually restricts the district from creating laws that would... Uh, have leniency potentially in the sentencing for people who are younger, people who are 18 to 25 years old. You benefited from leniency. You benefited from a diversion program that kept you out of jail. Why shouldn't that be available to other teens right now? Listen, that's a great question. First of all, when I was 18 years old, it was possession of marijuana. I had it. Make no excuses for it. It was wrong. It's wrong at any other time. I had to deal with it then, and I moved on with my life. Like every man and woman should. When you mess up, you make up, but you never give up. I never gave up on myself, and neither did my family, neither did my friends. Now to the bill that you're talking about. What's going on in the District of Columbia is that they treat all offenders from the ages of 25 and younger as minors. No other state in the country does that. No other jur jurisdiction does that. So all we did in the nation's capital is say, you're going to treat D.C. offenders... Uh, 18 and younger as minors like everybody else does. That's what we did. That's the appropriate application of the law because you juvenile are... crime is up massively in D.C. But, uh, and D.C. is not safe. I, 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 As a former D.C. resident, I lived there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I understand what's going on in the district and the challenges that they're facing with sure. crime. But you were also 18 years old. You were an adult. And you benefited from a diversion program that allowed you to not actually serve time for your offense. The state of Florida so had I, a diversion I wonder, program, yes. I, I mean, why should that not be available? If you're an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old in the district, mm -hmm. why shouldn't it be possible under certain circumstances, I'm not saying in blanket mm -hmm. cases, 
for those individuals to benefit from the same kind of leniency that you did. Now, are we talking about having a dime bag in your pocket? Or are we I, talking about, I, I'm just talking about, if dis you're, if I'm you're, talking but, about but, discretion, but Abby, which is based on but a case-by-case case But Abby, basis. let's be consistent. I'm, I'm, you're asking me to be, clarify, so I just want to well, clarify fair, what I'm asking But about. I want to be consistent. Are we talking about somebody having a dime bag in their pocket? Or are we talking about carjacking? Because the crimes in D.C. that are being tried as juveniles for people who are 22, 23, 24 is carjacking. It is burglary. It's, it's, it is. It, hold on, hold I on now. I hold understand, on. but your it's, bill it's, it's is your bill is a blanket up. bill that, it, that, that is doesn't, wrong. It doesn't because, discriminate based on. And the because crime. the D.C. City Council does not take crime seriously, then it is incumbent upon Congress to do one that. Of the interesting, and that's what we're going to do. One of the interesting do things you want about the nation's this, capital to be safe. I know I do, Congressman. One of the interesting things about this, though, is that sure. it actually prevents the D.C. officials from making laws that actually are stricter on crime. Why would you want to do that? The D.C. City Council has proven, frankly, for the last decade, that they are not interested in actually prosecuting crime and keeping people safe in D.C. They went through a series of, of bills that they wanted to do, which Mariel Bowser herself vetoed, and the council overrode her. It took Congress to act to throw that out. Uh, my colleague from Georgia, Andrew Clyde, led that, led, led that effort last year, and basically we had to shame Joe Biden into signing that law to repeal what the D.C. City Council wanted, wanted to do because they wanted to make it more progressive Just and not, not make public about, safety number one. I think the bottom this is line that I'm now. trying to get out here, and I'm sure. trying to understand where you stand because sure. you are in a unique position. Of you course. understand what it means to I have do. a second chance. Yes, I do. And you're supporting a bill that basically takes that off the table in a blanket fashion for a lot of people. Do you believe that there should be second chances for young offenders in certain mm -hmm. circumstances? Abby, of course I do. So then Listen, why would you support I'll, a bill well, that would me, make well, that not possible in the District of First of, of all, Columbia? that's not what the bill does. Let's be clear. So number two, I'm a product of second chances. I had an ability to turn my life around and I made the most of it. And I would tell that to anybody that's made a mistake. You have an opportunity to, to walk away from that mistake and do better going forward. And so my story is indicative of that. But what we also have to do is make sure that adults are tried as adults. I was if not that tried. Were, if on, that Abby. was applied to Abby, you when you were 18 a, and when Abby, you were 21, you would have been facing when, jail time. When I, was 18, when I was 18 in Florida, they treated me like I was 18 as an adult who can sign a contract, who can go into the military, who can do so many other things, who could vote. They treated me as an adult. That's all we're saying to do in and the I District wanna, of Columbia. I just want to note that at, when you were 21, you faced I did. more charges again. I did also did not go to jail in Florida as uh, well. Oh, but hold on. Be, let's be clear. I did serve two years of probation. I went through that process. I did Fair have enough. to go and I did have to go and have it adjudicated. I went through that process. I also, under Florida law, went and had it sealed. I went through that process. And then when all that stuff was done, I did also go get a job, become a, fun, a standing member up in my community, served in my church, coach kids in, in, in basketball and football. I think it's absolutely. Built a family. I did all those things as well. I think it it's is absolutely possible, a, but you cannot be lenient. There has to be laws on the books that hold people accountable. Congressman, there's no question there was leniency available to you. That is why you have such an extraordinary story. There is leniency in the law in so many other places, but what the so, D.C. is... I, I don't say... Well, hold on, I don't Abby, so, but you got to be consistent. You can say you cannot what be D.C. When is doing is not about leniency and it's not about second chances. What D.C. is doing is this radical, progressive view of criminal justice, which is making communities less safe. That's what I oppose. I want to ask you about another issue. Just recently, there was this sure. issue of the search warrant for the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago property. Yeah. And it authorized the use of uh, deadly force for the FBI agents, mm -hmm. standard boilerplate language. But you and others have described it as an assassination attempt on the former president. That's just not true. Why would you say something like that? Well, first of all, my view of it is very simple. You have the FBI going in to do this raid on Mar-a-Lago. This is not like any other raid that they would do. FBI agents who did that raid did not want to do it. They didn't think it was necessary. And this is all politically motivated at the end because I, Merrick Garland wanted that to happen. The, the Merrick Garland for, wanted the, the scenes, language which your network raid, did cover, the language for of the going search, into Mar-a-Lago. Congressman, with all due respect, the language sure. for the search is standard operating procedure for every operation of that kind that the FBI does. They did the same thing when they 
searched Joe Biden's house. Yes, but I would say so that, how is that weaponizing well, what I would say, it? When they searched Joe Biden Joe, weaponizing the DOJ against himself. When they searched Joe himself. Biden's house, there weren't all the networks, from my recollection, with helicopters flying over the beach house in Rehoboth Beach, going to find the classified documents in his garage that he took when he was the vice president and when he was the United States senator, but which, the, by the I'm, way, is I'm, a violation of the espionage Congressman, Act. I'm talking about They didn't this, do that. I'm talking about they didn't this politicize conspiracy it. theory. They didn't politicize Congressman, it. Congressman, I'm talking about the conspiracy theory that the FBI was trying to assassinate Trump. Well, let's talk Would about, you acknowledge let's, that that is not true. Well, let's talk about what's fact. But, what's, uh, let's talk about what's fact. Just a real simple question. What's what, fact is, is it true or false that the FBI Abby, was trying to assassinate Abby, Trump? What's fact that is, is that Joe Biden violated the Espionage Act. He did it with impunity. I just want to know. And Robert Hur is not prosecuting him. Congressman, I just want to know that you man. are not meanwhile, responding to a very simple question about a conspiracy theory that you voiced. What conspiracy theory? That the FBI, by having on a document that they are authorized to use deadly force, was trying to harm or assassinate former President Trump. That is false. Will you acknowledge that? Can I, can I be very clear with you? Sure. I'm not sure what Merrick Garland is trying to do these days. So the answer because is Because it no. is clear that the you Department of Justice that that's is being a, that's weaponized against Donald Trump. That is clear. That's pretty extraordinary. That they're weaponized against Donald Trump. That's not extraordinary. That's what's happening right now, It's pretty extraordinary right now, that when faced with really clear facts, very clear facts, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much black and white, you won't acknowledge it. I, I'm trying to understand why. Abby, we just I mean, had this is it conversation. Because, what, is it because let's talk the about former president witnessing. himself has raised this conspiracy that you no, feel like you I'm have to even, support I've it? I've not even talked to the president about this. You asked me a question about the FBI raid. I'm telling you, we are witnessing a weaponization of the Department of Justice against a political rival. Because... Because Do Donald Trump had documents covered under the Presidential the Records Act. They I'm raided not litigating. I'm not litigating. Joe Biden the had documents, and there's no prosecution because he's a senile man. With you that's, about not even, that's not even that's not even equal validity justice. Validity of the charges. It's a simple question of whether the raid was carried out in a mm -hmm. way that was standard operating procedure for the FBI. And as you, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. The Republican Party sure. calls themselves a party of law and order. Yes, of course. The FBI, as law enforcement officers, they go and they serve, ser ser execute search warrants every day under the threat of violence. And they have to have that language every single time to protect themselves. In this case, though, they coordinated with the president's lawyers. They coordinated with the Secret Service. Why would you insinuate that that was some kind of attempt at former President Trump's life. Abby, I'm not making just, any I mean, it's very simple I'm not making to just any insinuation. Say, that's not the true. The only thing I'm saying is, is that what we have witnessed is an uneven uh, application of the law by the Department of Justice. You had Hillary Clinton, who, hold on, Hillary okay. Clinton violated the Espionage Act. Changing, there were no charges. You're changing Joe Biden the subject. Has no, no, because the purpose, of the, the, the purpose of the warrant is because of classified no, material, no, no. is I'm it not? I'm not talking about But you have the an unequal of application of the law. I'm talking about... You have about a two-tier system of justice that you, you don't want to actually when you acknowledge. tell when you tell your supporters and the former president's supporters yeah. that there was a government attempt on the former president's life and that is not true that is a major insinuation and it deserves a to be a government walked attempt back. You have, it you deserves have, to be walked back. I would time. argue right now, if you look at the actions of Jack Smith and Merrick Garland, there is an attempt to incarcerate Donald Trump over foolishness because they cannot win a political election. And they have lost their minds collectively. And they have decided that whether it's the documents case or this foolish January 6th case, which has no true merit, or what's happening here in Manhattan with Alvin Bragg, that they have chosen to use the justice system for political purposes and interfere in elections. In, in that's not a conspiracy theory, in Abby. The same That's a real situation. We should be talking about you're that, talking about not about what's written in the FBI document. Congressman, you talked about that. You tweeted I about the about FBI document. Things. You're the one changing the subject. But I do want to make one last note sure. because we're about, we have to go. Sure. But you've been asked this before. I'm going to ask you again just for the record. If Donald Trump loses the election in 2024, will you accept the results of that election? My answer has been very clear on this. If the states, it's a yes or no question. If the states and localities actually follow rules and procedures and everybody sees the rules followed, then of course you accept what's done. But what you can't have, what you cannot have it's a yes or are no question, judges and municipalities and districts not following law passed by state legislatures. That has led us to the problems we have in our elections. That's where you have, frankly, you've had Republicans and Democrats uh, object to elections. And so, Fair again, we just want to have a clear process. So your answer is conditional on based on... My, my answer is always conditional because you want to see the processes of the election 
actually go according to law, not according to outside groups and legal cases that come up, and you know they do come up. Not, a, I mean, the legal cases are how they adjudicate whether they are done by law. So, I mean, I, I think that that is definitely on the you table. You follow the law. That's what the Constitution it. says. Congressman Byron Donalds, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us.